Stay connected to your community and save. Just 99 cents a month gets you three months of unlimited access to inform.com. Visit inform.com slash subscribe and get your first three months of news for only 99 cents a month. To heck with the Rocky Mountains. It was Minnesota that inspired John Denver's first number one song. Hi, this is Tracy Briggs and welcome to this week's Back Then. How many of you can finish this lyric? You fill up my senses. Ready? Go. Like a night in the forest, like the mountains in springtime, like a walk in the rain. As you sing those words, and I know some of you are singing them, I wanted to spare you the hardship of listening to me sing them, but some of you are singing them. You can almost hear the soft guitar notes and clear, gentle voice of superstar John Denver. Denver's Annie song was a monster hit for the folk singer turned pop country superstar. Fans probably know that the song was written for Denver's wife, Annie Martell Denver. But fans in the upper Midwest might be interested to know Martell was a Minnesota girl. So who is Annie Martell Denver? Well, she grew up the oldest of four children in St. Peter, Minnesota. A 1964 graduate of St. Peter High School, she enrolled in her hometown college, Gustavus Adolphus, to study art education. But it wasn't in the classroom there that her life would change dramatically. That happened somewhere else. During her sophomore year, a trio of young men came to campus to perform. One of its members, a clean-cut, bespeckled blonde named John Duchendorf, took notice of the pretty brunette. Martell told the story on a recent episode of the Mo Rocca podcast, Mobituaries. She said, John was giving a concert with the Mitchell Trio, and afterward he was playing his guitar, and there were a group of people that were doing a play, kind of a silly little musical, and I was the girl that carried the signs across the stage, Act 1, Act 2, and according to John, I had a pair of blue jeans on and a flannel shirt and penny loafers. She told People Magazine in 1979 that John told her it was then that, quote, he fell in love on the spot, end quote. He wrote her a letter three weeks later saying that he hoped they could see each other again. They did a year later when he was performing another concert with the trio at nearby Minnesota State University, Mankato. They had their first date there, and he said John was charming and asked a lot of questions, and he was an immediate hit with her parents. Annie told People Magazine, John really appeals to those mothers. They didn't waste a lot of time after that. They were engaged nine months later and married June 9, 1967, at First Lutheran Church in St. Peter. After the wedding, the couple lived in Chicago for a short time and later settled in Edina, Minnesota. It was while living in Edina from 1968 to 1971 that John wrote the songs for his first three albums, including his first number one song, Sunshine on My Shoulders, which he says he wrote on one of those cold, dreary, late winter, early spring days. You know, those days when everything is still gray. But he said, quote, spring is in fact happening. That's why the song is so slow and melancholy, end quote. John performed all over Minnesota during those years. In 1970, he performed at Edina High School for students who had staged a walkout in support of teacher pay. Also in 1970, he played at the inauguration of Governor Wendell Anderson. The two men eventually became friends, and Anderson would go on to become the godfather to John and Annie's son. In 1971, the Denvers moved to Aspen as John began to pursue a solo career away from the trio. It was in Aspen where Annie's song was born. The young couple, he was 23 when they married, she was just 20, had gotten into a fight. John took off to clear his head in the Rocky Mountains that had become as synonymous to him as the granny glasses and mop-top hairdo. He wrote the words to Annie's song in just a few minutes while on a ski lift high above the snow. Annie told newspaper reporters at the time, When he played it to me, I cried. I was very honored by it. In the Mobituaries podcast, she said it still moves her. I still cry when I hear it, she says. It's really beautiful, and so many people have used it in their wedding. Over the years, when people learn who she is, naturally the song comes up. She told a reporter in 1999, People still stop me to talk about it. 
But what I want people to know about the song is that while I was John's muse for it, it was really about John's ability to love. It came from his deepest heart. But Annie's song isn't the only time Annie inspired John's music. In 1969, while they were still living in Edina, just two years after they had married, he wrote the song that would become his first hit as a songwriter, Leaving on a Jet Plane. The song became a huge hit for Peter, Paul, and Mary. Many believed it to be about a young soldier flying off to serve in the Vietnam War. However, that was not John's intention. He had written the song about the hardship of leaving Annie so often as he went on the road. Eventually, those days on the road took their toll on the marriage. In 1982, the couple divorced after 15 years of marriage. They shared custody of their two adopted children, Anna Kate and Zachary. John remarried and later divorced Australian actress Cassandra Delaney, with whom he had a daughter. However, John never forgot Annie. He would send her flowers on her birthday and Mother's Day long after they had divorced. It was just a couple of weeks after her birthday in the fall of 1997 that Annie would talk to John for the last time. She said, I thanked him for the flowers he'd sent for my birthday, and he went very quiet. He said, oh, but Annie, I love you. And I said, John, I love you too. Have a great trip, and I'll see you when you get back. But she didn't get to see him again. John Denver died when the plane he was piloting crashed near Pacific Grove, California, on October 12, 1997. Even before the Denvers divorced, Annie was starting to forge her own path in the world. She began to champion causes such as world hunger and arts programs. In 1982, she came back home to Minnesota to serve as the chairwoman for the Children's Home Society of Minnesota Benefit Concert. Her children had been adopted through that society. Now 76, the former Mrs. John Denver leads a life out of the spotlight, very different from the whirlwind days of the early 70s when John Starr shone so brightly. She told a reporter in 1999, It was incredibly exciting. I had never left Minnesota before I met John, so it was thrilling to go around the world and meet people like Cary Grant and Frank Sinatra. But what made her smile after John's death was not necessarily the memories of rubbing elbows with the biggest stars in Hollywood, but the day her children found that letter sent in 1966 from the struggling young musician named John Duchendorf, who hoped only to see her again. To borrow a phrase, clearly the letter filled up her senses. She said, I keep it on my desk now. It still moves me to see it. Thanks for joining me on Back Then. I hope you join us again. Get reliable and accurate local news with Inform.com. Inform.com is your trusted local news source with journalists dedicated to keeping you informed about what's happening in your community. Visit Inform.com now. Inform.com.